Okay, we're okay. So today we're gonna do um, learn about the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. So what is the Fibonacci sequence? Um, so the sequence is often written as one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four, or zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four. So in the chat, what do you think the pattern is? This is a pretty famous pattern. It has something to do with addition. Yeah. Hmm. It is okay. the Fibonacci sequence, but... Um, but like, how does it work? Yeah. Okay. Um, so one person got it right. So basically you do add the first two numbers. So you have one here and zero here. So you add zero and one together to get um, one, which would be the likes. Um, usually we start with one um, and then we uh, do the next one. So um, the second one would often be the second digit. Um, so the pattern, would go so you add one and one next so you get two then you add two and one together to get three you add two and three together to get five you add three and five together to get eight and you add five and eight together to get 13 and it continues on um so yeah okay so practice um, knowing the how like now how the sequence works, um, can somebody tell me like what the next step in this sequence would be in the first pink box? Okay. Yep, you guys are right. It would be fifty five because you add the previous two numbers, which are twenty one and thirty four. So then, what's the next one? You're going to say that every number you add. Okay, yeah, yep, it's 89. Okay, and then what's the next one? I think you guys like are catching on. Yep. It's going to be 144. Okay, next one. Yep. I'm going to trust that you guys added right. And yeah, we can just reveal it. It's 377. Yeah. So yeah, good job, guys. Um, okay, right. Um, Kayan, can you assign Charles to the other room? I, for some reason, can't. Um, because okay. I'm presenting. Okay, so an other important concept to know is the golden ratio. So given that A, so the golden ratio follows this rule. So given that A is greater than B, um, we have an A and a B such that A divided by B is approximately equal to A plus B over A. So for the golden ratio, we find what, um, a over B is. Um, so any pair of numbers that fits this is a golden ratio. So we find A divided by B to find the golden ratio for numbers that fit this pattern. So um, practice, are these pairs a golden ratio? So A and B, so A is 3.236 and B is two. So um, what is A divided by B? So also round to the nearest thousand.
Okay, so um, I don't see any answers right now. But remember, I'm asking you to find this divided by this. So find A over B. You guys can use a calculator for this, like to, if you want to. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing some answers. So it says round to the nearest thousand. So remember, it should be 1.618 and not 1.62. Um, but you did do the right math. You just rounded incorrectly. So remember, you have to round to the nearest thousand. Okay, so now find A plus B divided by A. So what would 3.236 plus 2 divided by 3.236 be? Remember, you can use a calculator. Okay, so I see three answers. And um, okay, so um, it is 1.618. So remember, we would want to do um, two, okay, wait, hold on, let me draw. We'd want to do two plus 3.236 as the numerator, which would be 5.236. And then we want to divide it by 3.236. So even just looking at it, you can tell that there aren't, like, it's not going to be greater than two because 3.236 times two is greater than six and 5.236 is not. So you automatically know it's less than two. So you can just plug it into your calculator and uh, you would get 1.618 as your answer. So um, yeah. So do these follow the golden ratio? Do A and B follow the golden ratio? Okay, yes. So um, you all said yes in the chat. And yes, it is. Um, they do follow the golden ratio because 1.618 is equal to 1.618. So, um, and, and that's the point of the golden ratio that A divided by B is equal to A plus B divided by A. Okay, so our next set of numbers, 22.654 and 14. So what is A divided by B?
Okay. So I am seeing some answers. Right. So it's 1.618. So again, we do the same process. So we do 22.654 divided by 14. And then we get 1.618. So in the chat, what is A plus B divided by A? Um, okay, so yeah, I'm seeing some answers. So yes, yeah, so it's 1.618. So we do 22.654 plus 14 divided by 22.654 and we get 1.618. So does this follow the golden ratio? Okay, yeah. Um, you all probably saw the answer, but yes, it does. Um, because again, 1.618 is equal to 1.618. So last set of numbers. 10.225 and Okay, yeah, a lot of you are saying 1.618 and that's correct again for like the fifth time. Okay, so now do A plus B divided by A. Okay, yeah, who would have guessed? It's 1.618 again. Okay, so yeah, you all are correct. Um, so does this follow the golden ratio? Okay, again, you all are correct. So do you see a pattern? like in what A divided by B and A plus B divided by A is for numbers that follow the golden ratio. Okay, yeah. so Aditya said everything is 1.618. So yeah, um, everything is 1.618 for the A divided by B and A plus B divided by A when it is the golden ratio. So basically what this means is that for any um, A and B A div um, that are a golden ratio, A divided by B is approximately 1.618. And the actual like exact value of this is one plus radical five over two. So um, this is irrational, like how pi is irrational. Um, wait, let me just write the exact value here so you all can like write it down. Um, one plus radical five over two. So that is the exact value for um, this, right? So this is pronounced, um, the correct pronunciation is phi apparently, but a lot of people say phi. So um, we're just gonna say phi in this class. Um, so yeah, okay. So phi is the Greek symbol used to express the value of the golden ratio and the exact value is one plus radical five over two. And the approximate value is 1.618. And again, it's similar to how pi is irrational. All right, so now the golden spiral, you might've seen the shape a lot. So when the golden ratio is applied as a growth factor, we'll see a little bit more what this means in a second, you get this spiral shape.
And um, so this, like the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence, the things we just learned about, they're connected with each other because, so remember with the golden ratio, the first number, the bigger number divided by the smaller number will always equal around 1.618, right? And now with the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, so the sequence where we added the two previous numbers together to get the next one, if you divide each number by the previous number, so like 13 divided by eight or like 89 divided by 55, then what happens is, Can you go to the next uh, slide? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as we see, um, like I think the pin boxes move away one by one. So as you can see, it starts to approach this value. Like it gets closer and closer and closer to the one value we kept talking about, which was 1.618, blah, 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 blah. So at first it's not that close, but then one, two, 1.5, 1.67, it just gets closer and closer to the um, golden ratio, like phi value. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the first activity, um, do you wanna put the link in the chat? Yeah, sure. Okay, one second. Okay, I see. Can anyone with the link can put it? Okay. All right, so go to that Google slide that's in the chat now. Okay, so um, hopefully you all are opening up this Google site. Um, so what you're supposed to do is, um, okay, so um, make a copy of this first slide for each of you and put your name on it. Okay, so I see four of you are on the staff room and there are only three copies of it. So make sure each one of you is making a copy of the first slide. And also there are nine kids in this room, so I should be seeing more people, um, or actually eight kids in this room, so I should be seeing more people. Yeah. Um, on a mobile, I think if you hold it, like if you hold the slide, it'll allow you to copy it. If not, I can make a copy of the first slide for you. Um, and make sure not to use the first slide. Just make sure you're making a copy of it. Okay, actually it throws up to me. Okay, never mind. Um, but yeah. Um. 
And I know it's the last day of this week and like we might be a little bit tired now. You know, we've been doing this for a couple of days now. But if you guys could like keep up the participation, I know some of you guys are and like thank you for that. But for those of you that are kind of like not participating as much, if you could, that'd be great. So that we can just like finish the first week strong, you know. Okay, Audrey, I know it didn't like you weren't able to copy it. So slide three, um, I put your name on it. So you can use that. Um, everyone, make sure to put your name on the slide. Um, good job, Akshita and Aditya, for doing that. Um, but there are like six of you, or five of you now, on this. So like, put your name on the slide. Um, and make sure you're not changing the first slide. Um, um, can't move anything or edit. Uh, I'm not sure why it's like that. Yeah, I it's so everybody could edit. Um, if you're on the Google Slides app, you have to like double click on a slide if you want to edit it. Um, and now it shouldn't require you to log in. Maybe you should try switching to computer just so it's easier. Or even an iPad, because I think it's just like, it, it would probably be easier if you're using a bigger screen. Okay. Yeah, I think everyone's on the slide now. Right. Okay. So each of the squares has Fib ha uh, has a Fibonacci number as their length. So do not change the sizes of any of these squares. Right. So try to arrange them to fit in this um, rectangle. And okay, my screen is scratching. Okay. Try to arrange them um, to be in this rectangle or to form a rectangle so that they form the um the um, golden spiral. So um, I will share a screen that shows the picture of um, the Fibonacci spiral, or not the Fibonacci spiral, the golden um, spiral in case. Okay, well, actually, um, my screen is frozen. So that's fine. Um, but yeah, okay. Okay, actually just um, arrange them in a rectangle. Um, and um, yeah. So yeah, basically just arrange the squares. So like the really big one, the 21 by 21, that's also like a square. So just like arrange them so that your rectangle doesn't have any holes and it's just like a full rectangle that can fit on this one Google slide. And there are many ways to do this. So as of now, there's no like real right answer, but just try to arrange it so that it fits and that should be good enough. And this might be a little bit like obvious, but just making sure. So you can't have any like squares that are on top of each other. So they all have to be like separated. Um, you're done. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. 
Yep, that works. Don't look at other people's slides, but um, yeah, your is right. Uh, so they can be on top of each other, like um, um, they can't be like they cannot be on top of each other. Uh, so like the um thirteen times thirteen um that um that box can't be on top of like eight times eight or anything. No. Okay. They okay. all have to be separated out, but it's possible. A couple of people have done it, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Audrey, I think you joined back. Are you able to edit now? Or like move around the squares? Yeah, I can send the link again. I think you guys can have until like 1045-ish. So just about five more minutes. Um, if you are already done, just hang tight. I think it must have like around half of you guys are done. But yeah, I think it will be done by five minutes. Oh, so can you minimize the boxes or no? No, so you cannot change the size of the boxes. Okay. Um, one hint, I guess, to help you get started would be, so the the biggest box, the 21 by 21 one, it stays where, at, where it is, like in the beginning, so like on the left. And then the next biggest box, the 13 by 13, that one goes like directly to the right of it at the top. So like, um, let me see your slide. Let's see. So, like this would be like right there. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Wait, I think your box size might have been changed a little bit. If you want to, you can recopy the like beginning one and then like start over if you need to. Yeah. Yeah.
Kiana, your looks good as well. Wait, so I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, so like, um, so like you have the 13 by 13 um, box and then can you like uh, put like another box inside so that be counted as, um, counted as in the, uh, like um, above the box or just in the box? So can you do that or no? Um, as long as the boxes aren't like overlapping, it should be fine. So your 13 by 13 book should be there. And uh, another hint is like the rest of the boxes are going to be, or wait, are gonna be able to, they're gonna be able to fit like underneath the 13 by 13 box in that like little space left over. So no, but that would be counted as um, uh, uh, just like underneath the boxes, right? Yeah. So you can't do that, can you? No, no, no. So what I'm saying is like, for example, on your slides, like the three by three box, right? The yeah. Six, it's yeah. like on top of the 21 by 21, right? Yeah. It's like inside it. So that's not allowed. Like all of these have to be like. Separated. Yeah, separated. But they can oh. touch each other. Yeah, OK. So then, so they can't be above it or below it either, right? um above or below do you mean like like that like for example like above as in like yeah 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 like yeah like this like this like can it be like that um i mean yeah it can but like it doesn't really belong there oh okay yeah i get it it might be a little bit confusing like when i first said this I was a little confused on where to put the boxes too, but then like once I'll explain it in like a minute or so when like almost everybody's done and I think it should make more sense when um yeah and Audrey yours looks good too.
All right. So I think most of you guys are done. and then one, one, two, three, blah, 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 right? And then I'm going to try to like arrange these boxes so that I started right here, but um, I don't think you can see my mouse, but I'm going to try to like go around adding these in a counterclockwise direction. So from like, you can think of it from bottom to top, from right to left. So then... Um, I got the two. Okay, I need to like move these a little this way. Oh, I forgot to move that one. Okay, so now I'm gonna add this three by three one. So just continue to add these in a counterclockwise direction. And then the next one is five by five because three plus two is five. And then the next one <clears throat> is the eight by eight always going in the counterclockwise direction. And let's just move all of these down a little so I have some space. And then adding the bigger 13 by 13 one at the top, then this 21 by 21 on the left. So I started in the middle and I'm just going around in this spirally shape going in the counterclockwise direction. And if we go back to the slides, so I'll give you a second to go back to the slides. All right. So now the golden spiral, the thing we just saw, like that I told you I'd explain a little more, it fits perfectly in this pattern. And if we just like continued it and added like a uh, 34 by 34 square later, like after it, it would still work and it would just keep continuing in this golden spiral pattern. And that's because the side lengths are the um, Fibonacci like sequence numbers. So um, where are Fibonacci numbers seen in real life? So if you've learned about this or like talked about this any other time, there's like a couple of examples that a lot of people like to reference for these Fibonacci numbers or like the golden ratio, you know, seen in certain like places in nature or like architecture or something like that. So can you guys think of any examples? Have you ever heard of them? If you've never heard of this topic before, then it's like perfectly fine. We'll like explain some examples in a second. Um, so like the kind of examples I'm asking for is like, um, I don't want to like give anything away, but basically, oh, like I saw the golden ratio in this specific drawing or something like that. It's more of like where you see like the spiral itself or mm -hmm. the ratio. But yeah, like if you haven't like talked about this before, it's kind of hard to think of it on your own. So if you don't know, it's perfectly fine. So like, are I gonna use this um, slide again or no? No. We're not going to use that activity again for right now. Okay. 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 So um, the examples um, shown here. So um, the Fibonacci sequence is like found in nature, like everywhere. Um, you can see it in flowers um, and other plants, especially and plants especially. Um, so the amount of petals on the on a flower is almost always one of the Fibonacci numbers. Um, so as you can see. 
Um, this sunflower has like 13. I don't know the names of these other um, flowers, but like they also have one or two or three or five or eight petals, which are in the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna move on to some uh, problems. Okay, so, um, uh, so th this is like um, actual math stuff now like actual like um, things you could probably see. So your friend Peter Parker gives you a basket filled with flowers. In the basket, there are six different types of flowers. For each type, the amount of petals are a unique Fibonacci number from two to 21. The amount of flowers of each kind equals the amount of petals. So if there are two flowers, there are two petals uh, for each of them, three flowers and three petals and so on. What is the probability that you randomly pick a flower that has less than eight petals. So assuming that the probability of picking each um, flower is the same. This one might be a little bit more tricky if you haven't really worked with like probability and stuff before, but um, basically for this one, as long as you like understand how many of what types of flowers there are, uh, you can like, like find the number of flowers that has less than eight petals, but I mean, since we didn't really like teach probability yet, I think we might want to just like go over this one together. Yeah. Okay. So um, each flower, um, so you're equally likely to pick each flower. So um, first we want to find the total number of flowers, right? So we have two flowers with two petals, three with three, so on. So we have 21 with 21 petals and two with two petals and everything in between that is like, um, three, four, five, six. So we want to find the sum of the numbers from two to 21, um, like all the integers, right? Um, so actually, um, this is an other concept that is um, that you will use in a lot of um, competitive math um, things. So in order to find the sum of the numbers from A to B, um, right, no matter like, um, if they're multiples of numbers, like if you want to find the sum of all the even numbers from two to five, or if you want to find the sum of all like um, digits that are one more than a multiple of three or something like that, right? You know, you can use this technique. Um, so first, um, so what we do in such a scenario is we find the um, sum of the first and the last numbers. So let's say the first and last numbers are A and B. So we can like generalize this equation and then you can figure out how to find the sum of numbers from two to 21. So we find the sum of A and B, right? Um, and now um, we want to multiply it by the number of numbers. So in this scenario, um, you know that you're doing the numbers from two to 21. So that's the same amount of numbers as the numbers from one to 20. So that would be um, uh, 20 numbers, right? Are there in this um, sequence. So number of numbers, let me just write that. And I know my handwriting is bad. Um, so sorry about that. But hopefully you can read it, okay? So you multiply a and a like the sum of the first and last terms by the number of numbers. And then you divide it by two, right? Okay, wait, hold on. Wait, shoot. Am I doing something wrong? I. Wait. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm not doing this right. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> so we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, the Fibonacci sequence, as you all know, goes one, one, two, three, five, um, eight. Uh, 13, 21, right? Okay, I messed up there. I forgot that it said Fibonacci sequence. 
Um, Cause yeah, so that's a reminder to read the question properly. Um, I did not do that. Okay, so um, we have two, three, five, eight, 13 plus 21 um, flowers. So we wanna do two plus three plus five plus eight plus 13 plus 21. So that would be um, uh, five, 10, 18, um, 20, uh, but, uh, 31, and then uh, 52, right? So we have 52 total flowers. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, so we, right. yeah, okay. So we want to find the total number of flowers that have less than eight petals. So remember that means less than eight and not eight or um, less, right? So we do not include the eight here. So the number of flowers that have less than eight petals would be two flowers plus three flowers plus five flowers. So what's that in the chat? Um, what's two plus three plus five? Okay, yeah, right, it's 10. So we have, um, this is a probability that you randomly pick a flower that has less than eight petals, right? It's 10 over 52. But um, as you can see, both the numerator and denominator are multiples of two. So we want to divide it by two so we can simplify the fraction. So five over 26 would be our answer. Um, okay, I don't know, okay, right. Some of you um, said like five over 28 or five over eight. So you were like close, but like, um, yeah, you probably just messed up adding up the total number of flowers. So yeah, um, don't do that. Okay, so the probability that you randomly pick a flower that has less than eight petals is five over 26. So um, yeah. All right, so the next place we can see uh, this like Fibonacci numbers is in music. And so this one might be a little bit confusing to like think of yourself, but once you just like see these patterns and how they relate, it's really cool. So for example, like in the little chart thingy, you can see that the numbers we're gonna look at are one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. So the first like, one, two, three, four, five, six, six-ish numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. And they can all be found within like one octave of a piano. So first, number one, well, there's like an octave and there's one octave in this little like section, right? And then the two and the three. So I think I'm just gonna like explain you to these cause it'll be like hard to think of them. So the two and the three is, um, like the grouping of the black keys. So you can see between uh, the C, D, and E, there's like two black keys. And then F, G, A, B, there's three black keys. And then for the five, the five shows the number of the total number of black notes, it's black keys. So there's two plus three, there's five. And eight, there's a total of eight white keys in this octave. And finally, 13 is the number of total uh, keys on this octave because obviously you just like add the number of black keys and the number of white keys. Okay, so now an, another like application problem that's sort of probability related. So this might be a little difficult since we have not really covered probability at least in this session of Mathema. So if you have like been to our other sessions, we did like teach probability in the past, but if you have not and you have them in this, like that's totally fine. So baby Kate is randomly banging on a piano in an attempt to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So the piano has one octave, meaning that there's 13 notes on it. And if she gets a note right, Kate's mom will give, us, give her two cookies. But if she gets a note wrong, Kate's mom will take one cookie away. So if Twinkle Twinkle Little Star has 42 notes, what is the expected value of cookies Kate will get? Um, and so, um, uh, this is just a note, but expected value, no matter what it is, can always be negative, um, even if it doesn't really make sense um, that it would be negative. 
because it's like expected and not like um, what you will have, right? So that's a hint. All right, I think I'm just gonna go over it since it is another probability example pretty quickly. Um, but just try to follow along and just kind of see what kind of steps you might take on a probability problem like this. Okay, so first, basically what I'm gonna try to do is calculate the number of cookies that baby Kate is like expected to get per note. So this might be a little like counterintuitive, but basically, so there's 13 notes and obviously only one of them is right at a time. So there's one out of 13 probability that baby Kate will get it right. And um, she gets positive two cookies. So you multiply by two, which would give us um, two over 13 cookies. But at the same time, there is a, ooh, I think I see the right answer. So at the same time, there is a, 12 out of 13 chance that she will get it wrong, which means each time she gets it wrong, she gets negative one cookies, since she gets one taken away. So now if we add that together, so two over 13 minus 12 over 13, that gives us a total of negative 10 over 13 cookies per note. So that might not really sound like plausible in a real life sense, but that's just like how it is based on the math. And now, since there are 42 notes, if we multiply, then I think it gives us negative 36 cookies. Yeah, or negative 32. Is it two? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was like negative 32.3, so yeah. Um, yeah, negative 32. All right, okay, round to the nearest one. Right, so that was like pretty close. I think you were probably like on the right track. Yeah, you probably just multiplied incorrectly. Um, and that's an easy mistake to make when you're in math counts or doing like competitive math. You'll make like, um, you know what you're doing, but you'll make a like silly mistake. So make sure like you check your work if you have time in math counts or AMC. Okay, so the next example, um, this one it should be a bit more simple. So I think you guys are going to be able to do this one. So in our hands, and just like basically in any, uh, like a lot of like our body parts and stuff, you can see the like Fibonacci numbers slash the golden spiral too. So for example, the length of our hand, it's like in this ratio where like these different parts of your finger and your hand, they are like two, three, five, eight, which are some numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So this question about our hands, it uses this. So you might wanna like remember this, we can go back to it later, but um, Kendall Jenner has quit her career as a supermodel and wants to become a hand model instead. So on her application, the modeling agency has asked her for the length of her middle finger's proximal phalanx. So that's like this little section right there um, in the picture. So if Kendall's entire hand is 17 centimeters long, then what is the length of this little section on her middle finger? So um, if we like go back to the other thing, it says that 8x plus 5x plus 3x plus 2x is the length of your hand. And well, we know that the length of her hand is 17. So that should be a pretty big clue. And um, so what you would do is find X using that equation and then multiply it by five since this middle like section is five times the length of X. So essentially solve for x. Yeah, solve for x first and then multiply it by five. Yeah.
Okay, so um, I'm saying a lot of 5x. So that while that is the length of that thing, we first need to find x, right? So um, uh, in the chat, what is 8x plus 5x plus 3x plus 2x? Like how many x's would that be? Um, 17 is quite close, but yeah. yeah. So it's 18x, right? So now we know that 18x is equal to 17. Now, how would we solve for x in the chat? Or you can unmute, honestly. So how would you get from 18x to x? Okay, yeah, we would divide by 18, right? So we'd get 18x divided by 18, which is just x, is equal to 17 divided by 18. So we're going to leave it as a fraction. And now we want to solve for 5x, right? Because we're trying to solve for this entire length, right? So um, what is 5x equal to in this context? How would we find 5x? given x is equal to 17, 18. Yes, so we'd multiply by five. So what is 17, 18 multiplied by five? Remember, just leave it in a fraction form, right? Um, or you can put it into your um, calculator. Okay, yeah. So it would be 85, 18. So when we divide 85 by 18, when we put it into our calculator, we'd get 4.72 centimeters. So that would be our answer. So the length of this thing um, for um, in the problem would be equal to 4.72. So um, yeah, so this would be 4.72. So that is the answer. Um, so um, that was um, when you broke it down step by step, um, you guys knew what you were supposed to do. So um, keep that in mind when you're given like, a question that asks you to solve for like an unknown given some information, make sure you're dividing it into like easier steps. So you, um, you know, aren't lost. Okay. Um, wait, hold on. I think for the sake of time, we might need to yeah okay. okay so there were a lot more like applications so different plants and like animals our ears and stuff even them they all like can see the golden spiral but uh so i think we're gonna go to an activity another activity that's more like i guess you can participate more so basically, we're going to send you a Google Slides link again. And you're going to try to find an example of the golden spiral in real life. So if you could try to take the picture on your own, but if you're like not able to take pictures right now, like maybe you're, I don't know, somewhere like not at home or something, and you're joining this class, then you can like search it online. but if you could try to find a try to take a picture of um something that like would show fibonacci numbers or the golden spiral it could be one of the examples that we talked about and put it on this google slide that i will send in just a second let's see and um try not to like i guess do the same exact one somebody else did just so that we can like see more uh, examples. 
So you can like leave your computer or whatever for a bit and like move around your house or something and try to take a picture and um, upload it to your Google Drive and like you could add it as a picture onto this. Yeah, so we'll give you 10 minutes to do that. So it's 11, 12 right now. So how many examples? Um, if you want to find more than one, that'll be like great. But the minimum required, I guess, is just one. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yep. So and I'm just going to say, like, if you take the picture and then you upload it, I think I'm going to give you guys like four points. So that's like a pretty big amount of points. And I think I told you yesterday, but like at least for class one, the point difference is honestly not that much. Like it could change a lot just by today. So the rankings, they all end today. And like right now would be a great opportunity for you to try to climb into the top three and get a prize. So I think we can come back at like 11, 20, maybe yeah. 25. 11, 20, sounds good. Yeah, if you are done, just like put it in the chat that you're done. Mm -hmm. Um, try to take a picture, um, but if you can't find any examples, um, or if like uh, your, um, or if someone else has done it, has done the example you're thinking of, um, then yeah, you can take a uh, picture from online. But there's a lot of examples you can use, like if you maybe have a flower in your backyard or something, you could like run and like take a picture of it and come back. Or you could take a picture of your hand too, like that would work too. Mm -hmm. Anything we talked about would work as well. Um, okay, yeah. Um for taking a picture of it, try and see if you can use your phone or if you don't have a phone, like your parents' phone or something like that. Um, so you could take a picture and then just send it um, and then open up the slides on that um, uh, device so you can just easily upload it. Or send it to your email and then open it on that and then upload it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, write your name besides the picture so we know who put it. Um, if you don't have any ideas, um, well, you probably do have some plants um, around you somewhere, whether it's in your backyard or if it's, um, you know, uh, I don't know, like you have some in, like on your porch, something like that. You probably have some plants. Um, the human body also has um, many examples like your hands, your ears, um, uh, technically your face. Um, but yeah, um, so you could put those examples. Um, uh, there are other examples. Um, I don't know if you have like art in your home, it probably uses the golden ratio somehow, whether it's like the width and length, or if it's like, I don't know, if it's um, like 
a drawing of a person, um, then yeah, it would have the Fibonacci sequence somehow, right? Um, uh, wait. There are a lot of examples you can find in your home. It's not a question of, do you have any? But if you can think of any. So, um, yeah. Um, you might also have like a tree in your backyard or you might have pine cones or something like that for scent or for other reasons, right, you know, or decoration or something like that. Um, so like you could take a picture of that. Pine cones um, are also, they have, um, they use the Fibonacci sequence. Um, fruits, vegetables, stuff like that. Um, specifically a broccoli or a cauliflower, I'm pretty sure. Or pineapples, pineapples, or yeah. Okay, I searched online where you can find uh, golden ratios at home. Um, it says hurricanes. I don't think you have one of them at home. Something tells me and spiral galaxies, you probably also don't have one of those at home. Um, but you could probably find like, I don't know, a spider web. Um, my basement has lots of those. Um, but you could find a picture of that. And it's if it's big, then it could potentially have um, the uh, Fibonacci sequence. Um, Oh, okay, wait, let me um, move you to that. Oops, my bad. I probably moved you to the wrong one. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. okay, so it is 11.20. Hopefully you all have put something um, in the golden ratio slides. If not, um, I don't know, search up something. 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds to search up something if you don't have. Um, um, Okay, yeah, good job. A lot of um, uh, like shells, like whether it's snails or just like shells, um, have Fibonacci spirals in them. So yeah, and then the Mona Lisa, yeah, that also um, has um, Fibonacci sequences. Um, and then flowers, yes, good job. Um, everyone else, there are like one, two, three, people who participated in this, um, y'all just search up a picture, search Fibonacci sequence nature and paste a picture. No? Yes, um, at least try it, you know? If you right. can't think of anything, at least let us know you're like listening to us and participating. Right. If you have a pet, okay, they have um, Fibonacci sequences, you know, like ratio their body to like, 
their body. Yeah, that was very good. Um, okay, if it's not letting you paste the picture you took, um, honestly, if you took a picture, you could just send it to the email, the Mathema email. Um, so we can just see that you did it. Um, but yeah, you can search um, a, um, a picture if you want to, or you can send it to that email. But yeah, what we we're trying to tell you is uh, this like pattern is really cool. <clears throat> and even if you might not like think about it in everyday life, it's, it's like actually there. all around you. Like for example, like for the flower petal ones, have you ever seen a flower with like four petals? Usually no, and like not really. There's usually like three or five, but like um, most of the time you don't really see flowers with like four petals. Oh. And it's because four isn't like a Fibonacci sequence number. So um, yeah. it's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's why like four leaf clovers are so rare. Um, yeah. Because like, it's not like natural to have exactly. a four leaf clover. So yeah, just like, it's pretty cool. And of course, relating to our theme, you usually don't learn about this in school. So yeah. Um, so there are a lot of mathematical applications of um, the golden ratio, um, but um, we are going to look at um, two examples. So in pentagons, for all regular pentagons, a diagonal, any diagonal you take, because there are like really only two diagonals from each point, from each vertex, um, divided by the side length is always going to be the golden ratio. Remember, again, it's one plus radical five of that divided by two. So um, it will always be the golden ratio. So um, that's um, interesting and important to keep in mind. Um, and the golden triangle um, is, or there, there is a specific triangle called, uh, which is the 72, 72, 36 degree triangle. And it's um, the side length to the side is also um, in the golden ratio. So um, this is important to know um, because like in a lot of math problems, math comes problems that involve geometry, um, if it doesn't involve right triangles, it will likely involve a pentagon or the 36, 72, 72 degree triangle in some way, shape or form. Um, and you could solve it through other means but it's like, um, like this would be the most direct route for a lot of uh, math counts problem. So say that AB, side AB, um, yeah, you can exit the um, Google slide. So say that side, that side AB has a length of one, right? Then that would mean that the length of side C would be equal to one plus radical five over two, right? Um, so, um, uh, quick like math question thing. Um, what would the perimeter of this entire 72, 72, 36 degree triangle be if the base, so AB, what, had a length of two? So in the chat. Okay, firstly, um, if the length, if it had a length of two, right? Um, if this if AB had a length of two, what would the length of CB be? If it was a 72, 72, 36 degree triangle. And the golden ratio. Okay, can anyone in the chat say, okay, wait. Um, so the golden ratio is 1.618, but um, so um, yes. Um, but also um, if the base had a length of two, it would be one, it would be two times. So B would be two times that because um, you're multiplying the golden ratio by two, right? So 
um, if you're multiplying the base by length too, you're multiplying all the sides by length too, if you wanna keep the same like angle measure. So what's two times that 1.618? Yeah, good job, Akshay. So it's 3.236, right? And um, we can do the same thing and find CA. And since CA and CB are equal, what would the length of CA be? In the chat, what would the length of CA be? if we know that CB is 3.236. Just kind of look at the triangle and like see how it relates to another one of the slides, sides. Um, okay, I don't know if you all have learned about isosceles triangle, but if you have two angles in a triangle that are the same, then the side that is not in between those two, the sides that are not in between those two angles will have the same length. So what is the length of CA if we know that CB is 3.236? Okay. Um, remember that this is an isosceles triangle. And since we know, know that all the sides are multiplied by two, and we know that um, AC, okay, wait, let me quickly like erase. Okay. So we know um, right now that AB is two. And we know that this is the golden ratio times two, right? So that would be one plus radical five, which is also equal um, to uh, 3.236. So what would AC be? So basically, what we're trying to tell you is that like AC, like CA and CB, they're supposed to be the same length. So you actually don't use any operation. It's just still gonna be like 3.236. Yeah. Okay, but so yeah. remember- It's okay I... if we haven't learned that yet. But it is 11.30 and um, I will post this on Google Classroom, but just to let you know, the top three people, four points in class one for this week, uh, first place was Colin, who I don't think is here today. Um, second place was Sai Shreyas. And then the third place winner, super close to second place, was Akshay. And um, really close behind the third place was Aditya, uh, Rishi, and I think Audrey. Yeah, you guys were like really close. But we will like change like everybody will start from zero next week. So if you didn't get to place this week, you always have a chance next week. Yeah, and remember your points are based off of your participation more than your correctness. So even mm -hmm. if you're unsure about what you're saying, at least say something, okay? You'll get more points. Um, and yeah, we're giving out like prizes for the people who are in the top three or yep. the top, right? Um, so make sure you're in the top. And yeah, um, so really? yeah, it's the end of the first week as Kayan said. So um, we'll see you on Monday, um, but please make sure you're participating and um, you know, um, yeah, just be engaged in the class and that would be good.